Um, okay, my name is Jess. I'm here to give you an introduction to Hadoop, which is a parallel computing framework. Um, and full disclosure, I came up with this presentation as part of a job interview where they gave me, they, they told me on Monday, hey, you're interviewing with us on Thursday. Um, give us a 30 minute presentation on Hadoop. So this is my knowledge and generally what I gave to them. So there will be like some business insight type things, so kind of a different perspective than maybe what you were planning on getting today, but hopefully it'll still be um, quality. Um, okay, so obviously there are problems with big data. Um, the two main problems are one, storage, and two, processing. So as an example uh, for storage, um, this is the um, data storage at NCAR, the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Colorado. Um, and as you can see, it's very expensive looking, very large. Um, they're getting climate data in every second and they need some place to store it and this is what they have decided to use. And again, for processing, the second problem with big data, um, again, this is NCAR, this is their supercomputer, tons of nodes, um, again, very large and uh, intimidating looking, but this is what they use to process all of their data. Um, so Hadoop was developed in order to uh, try to address these problems. Fun fact about Hadoop, um, it is named after one of the inventor's son's stuffed yellow elephant. Um, apparently kids now name their stuffed animals things like Hadoop. Um, so what does it do? So in order to attack the storage problem with big data, um, it divides the data up into different blocks, into different subsets, and then it stores these data um, across multiple nodes. And so the data is not just in one big chunk in one place, it's divided up, and so already the storage is much more efficient. And then in terms of the processing, what it does, it uses some dimension reduction techniques um, and obviously parallel computing in order to process all this divided data. Um, and we're going to go into both of these. So the um, Hadoop store data storage system is called um, HDFS, which stands for Hadoop Distributed File System, and the processing part is called MapReduce. So let's check these out. So the HDFS system, um, this is kind of the way it works. So it's scalable, which means that um, it takes all the data, like I said, and it divides it into those, ugh, go away. There's no X button. All right, cool. Thank you. Ah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, microphone. All right, here we go. Cool beans. Okay. Um, so yes, it takes all your data and it divides it up into different blocks. Um, it's also very locally accessed, and so you can just have your multi-node cluster, which is on local common servers. You don't need anything uh, big or fancy or access to any um, big supercomputer or anything like that, um, which is really nice. And then you can just you know, use shell commands in Java or something like that um, to access the data. So that seems pretty cool, fairly local, um, in order to store all these huge amounts of data. Um, and then another... Um, benefit of the HDFS is its fail capability. And so it takes, it automatically take e takes each block of data and kind of does its own backup system um, where it might, if you're using multiple servers, it could uh, take, for instance, block one and it will um, be on one server and then it might also be on another server. And so that way, if you're processing something and something with um, block one fails, it'll just say, oh, okay, well, let's go to the next, um, server, and so it's kind of an automatic backup, which is really nice. Okay, and then the MapReduce, which um, is the processing part of the Hadoop framework. So the mapping part is you have your data set, and then it applies a mapping task to that data set, and then that results in mapping output. And then the reduce, reduction part of it, is it takes that mapping output, applies a reduction task to it, and then you get output from that. And that's kind of your general output that you wish to have when you're processing this data. So for instance, um, if you're taking all these blocks of data that you've created, that's input into the mapping task, uh, where you apply your mapping task to it, that reduces things down to a reduced, um, I guess, chunk of data, and then you apply your reduction task, and then that results in your output. So there's an analogy that I found on IBM's website that I thought was really helpful, so I was gonna walk you guys through that. Um, and it's about the Roman Empire census. So everyone, pretend you are Caesar, 
um, Ides of March was not too long ago, so that's funny. But um, pretend that you're in charge of the Roman Empire and you want to, to take a census to find the population of everyone in the Roman Empire. So you start with everybody in the Roman Empire. You have a list of all their names and I guess the, you know, all the people. And so that's your initial data. And then you, instead of just going through and counting each one of them, you decide to take your many servants, minions, and um, go tell them to go to each individual city where people are living. And that's kind of uh, breaking the original data up into different cities is kind of how the HDFS system works there. So your people go to the cities, they count every single person in each of these cities, and now they have in their brains population of each city. Um, and so that's kind of analogous to the map task, the mapping task, counting um, what's going on in those cities. And then your people come back to you as emperor and tell you all the populations of each city and you apply your reduction task, which is sum, and you sum up all those things. And now all of a sudden, every single person in the Roman Empire is now reduced to your output, which is the population of the Roman Empire, which is what we wanted. Any questions about that? Cool. So that's kind of the basic framework of Hadoop, how it works, the storage and the processing. Um, they have also developed things um, in addition to Hadoop that sort of add-ons that you can run alongside of or even on top of Hadoop. Um, for instance, Apache Hive is uh, if you um, really like SQL or you're used to SQL or you need to query something similarly to SQL, Apache Hive is kind of a new like a application type thing, an add-on um, where you can query things like, like in SQL. Um, Spark, we're going to talk a little bit more about Spark a little later, um, but you can use Hadoop over different, um, using different applications like R, Python, things like that. Um, so these kind of make it easier to use the Hadoop framework because Hadoop can be a little, um, a little complex to use it straight through that. So that's pretty nice. And Hadoop is open source, and so if you're using an open source Hadoop and then you're using like <coughs> R, which is obviously also open source, then you have just minimized costs so much, and uh, yeah, your boss will be happy with you. So some pros and cons of Hadoop in general. Um, like I said, it's open source, which makes it more affordable. Um, it does, uh, if you are able to set it all up correctly and all this stuff, it does allow for much easier execution and processing of your data. Um, some cons are that you do need a, more, a larger infrastructure for it to really be um, successful, so multiple nodes, possibly multiple servers, things like that. And then if you wanna just do straightforward analysis on your data set, it's not as easy. Um, you might need one of these add-ons or, or something like that. So here are some examples of people who use Hadoop. Um, Hadoop can be used for searching content optimization, which people like Amazon, Spotify, they use for that. Um, data storage, Facebook, Twitter, obviously tons of data coming in all the time. Um, things like New York Times and Greece.com, who have a lot of um, images and um, high resolution pictures, use Hadoop for image conversion and storage. So now we're gonna kinda walk through a case study. Um, so Sears, if you remember who they are, Sears and Kmart, um, they're kind of an early 2000s, late 90s, um, was maybe their heyday, but um, they are uh, retail stores. And so what they, they realized that with Walmart, Target, Amazon, um, they were losing quickly to all these competitors. And so they decided that they needed to get to know the customers better. Um, and the way to do that was through individual customer personalization. Um, so they said that if we make the retail process better for the customer, then that's going to give us a higher profit. And so how did they do that? Spoiler alert, they used Hadoop, um, and they actually became one of the front runner in big data technologies, So, which is why I chose them for my case study. So let's check it out, see how this works. Um, so before using Hadoop, Sears had collected all this data, every single transaction um, from either a Sears or a Kmart store all across the nation. Um, they had it in this big data set and it was gridded, but they could only analyze 10% of the data. And so um, I saw quotes from different data scientists saying, we had all this data and we stored it all, which was really expensive, but then we could only use 10% of it, which just kills you. And so um, 
Obviously, this is harmful for any business insights if you're only using 10% of the data. It's inefficient um, profit-wise and um, just for business insights as well. And obviously, their sales were not improving only using 10% of the data. So the CEO decided to boldly step forward, and Hadoop was pretty new. And so uh, they took um, a week or so and just shut down everything, created this infrastructure, um, build everything from scratch, kind of used a little bit of trial and error, um, but they incorporated Hadoop into their uh, data storage and processing framework. Um, and so they started out with one node. This was, I don't know, maybe I think 10 years ago, maybe a little less than 10 years ago. Um, and now they have 300 plus nodes. Um, just from using one node, they were able to use 100% um, of their data. So congrats to them. Obviously, it saved them time, saved them money. Um, and actually, the CEO ended up liking it so much and thinking it was so successful that he kind of started his own side company called Metascale, which is um, only focuses on retail computing and analytics. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and then obviously, they're able to achieve their goal of those individual transactions and making things much better for the customer and being able to use all that data as well. So here's an example um, that came from the Sears website, which I thought was cool. Uh, so say you were a Sears data scientist and you wanted to query all items in any Sears or Kmart store that was priced greater than $29,999. I don't know what in the world that could be. But say you wanted to do that. Um, and so you had some tools available. You had obviously your Hadoop framework. And then on top of that, you had Ruby MapReduce, which is another um, processing tool. You had Pig, which again is the SQL um, kind of add-on, and then you had Hive. And you have a data set of 15 billion records, and you're trying to query through all of these things. So you decide that Pig can provide quick execution of this query. So you use Hadoop and then your Pig add-on. Your, imp your input is 15 plus billion records. And then your output is 28 records, and it took you 53 seconds using Hadoop. So much more successful, um, pretty short amount of time there. So um, that was our case study. Now I'm going to go a little bit into one of these add-ons, Apache Spark, that I thought was particularly interesting. Um, so Spark is a uh, specialist at data processing. So it focuses on the MapReduce, the processing side of the storage and processing system. Um, so it is in memory, um, which is a lot faster, in fact, up to 100 times faster than just using the um, clunkier MapReduce. Um, and it's built in order to um, apply different applications like R, Python, things like that um, easily. So this is kind of a step-by-step -step of how Spark works. First of all, again, it's open source, so that's lovely. Um, the one thing about Spark is that it does not have a file management system built in like Hadoop does, and so often people use Spark in addition to Hadoop, Hadoop for the storage, the HDFS system, and then they process everything using Spark. So you'll need your file management system, and then you're applying your parallel operations, obviously. And then once that's kind of all set up, you decide which application you like, Java, Python, R are some examples. And um, then you can do anything you want. So some of Spark's specialties are machine learning techniques, um, SQL queries, and then streaming data. Hadoop is used a lot with um, the, especially in the technologies of this day and age, streaming, video data, things like that, that take up a lot of space. Um, and again, this operates all in memory, which is really nice. So kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, Hadoop does have that HDFS built-in storage system, whereas Spark does not, so you will need your storage system for Spark. Um, its in-memory operations compared to its hard drive operations are a lot smoother and more efficient. Um, and so that means that it reads, operates, and writes kind of all in one step. And Hadoop, again, breaks it up and, and does part of the data at a time and like that. So like I said, a little clunkier. Um, Spark, um, if you remember, I said Hadoop had that backup system that they use um, and uh, where it creates another kind of a copy of the data blocks. And so Spark does not have that. Um, and so that's kind of some of the, one of the cons of Spark, but um, it does have a resiliently distributed data set is what they like to call it, which means that it has a backup system. So if you're 
um, processing with this certain block of data. And that breaks down. It has a certain system to like reboot it rather than just going to a different um, block like Hadoop does. So kind of different ways, but still a backup system. And then again, Spark has those built-in SQL machine learning things for easier analysis. And Hadoop, you need your advanced analytics add-ons. So from the ads of a business owner, like I said, you would be um, getting some of that today. Um, so if you need advanced analytics a lot and often, um, it might be more cost effective and easier to go with Spark and then just find another file system um, storage thing um, rather than using Hadoop. So um, one of the last things I found um, while doing all my research for this presentation was that Hadoop, Spark, these things are becoming a lot more common, which is really awesome for data scientists, but it's also really great in the business world because um, business owners are realizing that they can ask their scientists, their analytics people, a lot more complicated questions, and they're able to get, it, get the answer to them um, accurately, efficiently, in terms of time and money, which is really great. So statistics and this parallel computing, all this stuff has really started to transform the business world, even in terms of the questions that CEOs are asking of their, um, of their data scientists. So this quote, I think, um, captures that pretty well. So I think that's about it that I had. Um, this is a really great resource that I found um, if you want um, another introduction to Hadoop and has some more examples. Um, so if you just Google Hadoop SaaS, SaaS.com has a um, great Hadoop website. So, um, or I guess introduction, things like that. So, so yeah, that's what I have. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away.